me a bit about a bird joke, because we talked about Bill. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the bird joke, because he did come first as a critic. He was an intellectual or a professor, intellectual, this is the wrong thing, but he was a thinker as opposed to a doer, and then he was a critic, and then he came to Terrell. No, first he went to the CBC radio. Right. And that's where he was. And how, how he came here is the story. Uh, and this is so Bill. Um, Bill knew he wanted to leave and go to a larger theater. And uh, he put his thinking cap on and he had two people in mind. Uh, so we were in Tadisac, which was where his cottage, so-called cottage, large house was. And we stood out on the point and he told me the two people he, he was, had in mind. And he said he was, he was veering more toward Urjo, Karita. And I uh, and, oh, really? And, and, and luckily, I had, I had worked with Urjo, so I knew him. I knew him from the women's alumni. Uh, and I thought, yeah, sounds like a good idea. <laughs> He's such a good critic. I mean, I, it, was, it was one of those things. I, I think to myself, and it was his, his, his two choices were brilliant, really. Who's the second? Larry Lillo, who then went on to do such great work at, at uh, Vancouver Playhouse and, and elsewhere. Um, sadly, both of them died too young. But uh, <clears throat> I, I just think uh, it was a stroke of genius to get Urjo. And how did the theater change with Urjo? Certainly the, 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 the way in which it worked didn't change. And in fact, that was one of the best things about Urjo. He really, one of those people who came in and, and took his time seeing how things were set up. And he introduced his own taste, for sure. And that's, I, I mean, that's how it changed in some way. Although some of the people that he loved were people that Bill had nurtured, and some of them would have been nurtured by Bill if he had still been here. So I don't think that they would have disagreed on many of the choices that were made. Uh, he was... But in terms of staff or... Staff, yes, I think, yes, there was, there was a... a the person who directed you in the woods uh, was not somebody that Urjo got along with very well, and, and so that changed. But it was it was you know it was finding that that uh, balance. I don't think I don't think Bill would have got along with Andy. I think Urjo and Andy were, they were a complementary couple. So there certainly were were changes. Luckily, Urjo and I got along every bit as well as I got along with Bill. I, I think they're, both of them are remarkable people. I think Urjo's a one of a kind. And uh, I feel, I feel pr really privileged to have worked with him for 20 years. Uh, he, could be, he could be grumpy, he could be, you know, he could be difficult sometimes. Uh, when he had too many scotches, he could be, uh, snake-tongued, <laughs> but, uh, but he was always, he was always uh, so caring. He was, uh, for me, he was the closest thing to a girlfriend in a man. I could, you know, I could go to him with problems, uh, and, and he always recognized uh, if someone was off their mark. Uh, needed some help, needed some talk. If he did it through notes, they were notes you never threw away. Sometimes he could do it personally, not always. I directed a, The Dream in the Park in mm. whatever, 83, 84, mm. whatever. I assisted on the first one, and then I directed the next mm -hmm. year. And Urjo wrote me a note that I've kept. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. It was totally supportive. He yep. got what I was trying to do. Yep. He, you know, he saw a young director mm -hmm. who wasn't there yet, but he definitely pointed yeah. certain things out, and I've, I've treasured that note because it was personal and mm -hmm. it was honest, mm -hmm. but it was also 
driving the theater forward yep. a little in me. Yep. And uh, it was a remarkable piece. I think that's I think that's exactly what he did, and and he 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 reinforced he reinforced things for you and for me too. I mean, you you could get sort of down about something, and he would he would always have the right thing to say, and he was always supportive. It was amazing, and he I mean he had his own you know his own problems to 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 live with, but he was. A rem amazing in the way he would bolster other people. And why did he never choose to direct? He co-directed a couple of times. He, I think he looked at him as his own talents and thought, no, it's, that's, not my, that's not my forte. He, what I loved about him as far as his attitude toward playwrights, he really put it into perspective. I think Bill did too, but he didn't articulate it in the same way. He would say, when inevitably you're looking at a dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsals were not my best performances because I would get very nervous when I saw the things that needed to be changed and I'd want to change them right now. And he'd say, no, just be patient, just be patient. Something will happen. And in the long run, it is, this is the first production and it's the playwright's production. And if he's making a big mistake, but he wants to make it or she wants to make it, um, then we have to go with it. And I thought that was the most amazing thing because how do you learn? I mean, maybe some people never learn and maybe they stick with the, the, the possible mistake and, and never realize it. But I mean, I think other people really benefited from that attitude because there was nobody in there trying to twist you and change your method. If you didn't want to take their advice or you didn't want to talk about something, that was your prerogative. <laughs> oh, and, and of course, as a writer, he's just, he's just, I mean, he's so delicious because when he's, when he's saying something uh, negative, he, he can do it with a uh, flair that just knocks your sock. Well, the article he wrote about Richard Manette and Stratford and the the falling standard and the falling ambition at Stratford through, through Richard's uh, years was an undressing that I, that wasn't cruel, but was it, clear. It was, uh, it, it was not only not cruel, it was written with love and Richard didn't get it and many people, other people didn't get it, but I got it immediately. I knew exactly what, he, it was sadness. He was, he, he really loved that man and he was sad to see the direction in which he was going. And if only Richard had listened to that in the way it was intended. Uh, but that's the chance Urjo always took. So the, in, in the photograph of Urjo's office, there is fear less, mm. which is one of the things up on the wall. Yeah. That describes for me his writing Absolutely. Going to that degree, yeah. not out of yeah. pettiness or no. spite like no. Gina Mallet or no. uh, a number no. of other critics. Uh, he never wrote from spite. Mm. No. Um, but there was some, some fearlessness mm -hmm. of saying certain things in public. I mean, something like the, the article about Richard was exactly that. I know, I think as a critic, there were times when he felt that the intent and the, the, the result wasn't worth even taking that much care with. So he, he would be very dismissive about some work. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you, but I mean, you could go back and look. And I'm sure there were productions that just never worked from beginning to end and probably never should have been on stage. And then he could, you know, he could be like some of the people we the cat read. Yeah, yeah. He got candy. Yeah.